Hi, thanks for enrolling in the class. I'm looking forward to working with you and uh, seeing some of your videos after you've had a chance to work with some of the material. Um, hopefully you listened to that audio file and looked at the chart while you were listening to it and have a little better understanding of what's going on with this piece of music. So right now, um, what you should do is look in your lesson and find that recommended resources um, and open up and probably print out that file that says chord diagrams. It's a section of my book, Chord Shapes for Jazz Guitar. There is a free tutorial on six string jazz here that you can enroll in and there's a lot of really useful information about how that book is designed and what's so unique about it. And also I give you a lot of tips on how to uh, move chords and um, if you watch that that'll uh, make more sense than me spending a lot of time uh, telling you about the book in here. But um, if you look at those chord diagrams, you're going to see that all the minor chords are D minors, and that's going to work out really nice for this tune wave. So if you look at the very first page of chord diagrams, it's going to show you about maybe about three or four different voicings. I think there's usually about six on a page. So all of those D minors could be used on our vamp that we're going to start out with that goes from a D minor chord to a G dominant chord. The next page are G dominant chords, so they're cool too. But there are a few chords in there that are altered dominant chords, like uh, flat nines and sharp fives and flat fives. You don't want to use those. Just use the ones that are like uh, G7 or G13 or G9. And uh, probably the G13 and the G7 are going to uh, work really well for you, as well as this D minor, maybe the D minor ninth. And what you'll notice is when you go from like this D minor ninth or D minor seven to this G13, you're not really moving fingers. Only a couple of fingers will stay on the on, on the strings. These two I can just kind of slide them down. So I, don't pick your fingers up if you don't need to. Um, after you get to the point where you can move these chords a little bit, don't practice, well, you know, whatever it takes to get to the point where you can move your hands, but then practice that exercise in time and in a rhythm and, and practice learning how to play a, a nice groove like... slide into the chord. Anyway, that's maybe a little excessive, but it's a demonstration. So that's what's happening on the um, intro to this song. And also, um, at several points within the song itself, it keeps coming back to that. Now, um, when the melody gets ready to come in, with uh, maybe the saxophone player or a vocalist, or maybe you're going to play the melody. Um, just before that, you could be going like. That is a A7 sus. There's a picture of this, a diagram of this chord is a G7 sus in the, in the diagrams. Just slide it up a whole step and it's right there. Um, and it tells you what all the notes are. This chord is also called a, you could call it a G triad with an A in the bass, a G with an A in the bass, but it's in reality, it's an A dominant chord that is the five chord to the D major, which is where we're gonna start it, letter A right now. Letter A, now as you look at the major chords in the, in the excerpts there, they're all gonna be C major, so you're gonna have to slide them up a whole step. So again, it's not really going to matter if I play like um, a D major ninth or a, a D major.
major seven. But um, I like uh, the D minor major ninth is a pretty one. So find the C major ninth and slide it up a whole step. Our next chord is a B flat diminished. Um, if you look at the G dominant chord and slide it up to an A7, we've got to take this um, sixth string with your index finger. That note has to go up to B flat, so I'm going to have to refinger this. Create a bar here on the second, third, and fourth strings. My second finger is going to be on the sixth string on the sixth fret, and my uh, third finger is going to be on the third string on the sixth fret. The first and fifth strings are muted. So that's a B flat diminished. So it'd be like. It takes a little while to get used to. Now we've got an A minor seventh, and it's in the excerpts, this particular fingering. It's further up uh, on a later page. It's going to be a D minor on the tenth fret, so you're going to have to slide it down here. There's an A minor seventh, and on the very next page, there's a, a dominant chord. That would be a G7. Slide that fingering down here. And then here's a G major 7th, which this voicing is a um, on the a C major up here on the um, 8th fret. And there, it sounds might sound a little confusing, but this is really important for you to um, get these voicings use these voicings within a 2-5-1 progression. You're going to play these things thousands of times um, in, in hundreds of songs at least. Um, and they're the main ones. So you definitely want to have a handle on this. So you go like... Here's our A minor on the 5th fret to our D7 on the 5th fret. Here's a G major on the 3rd fret. And it's going to go minor, and that's the same minor voicing I used um, for the A minor. It's just down a whole step. And then here's the same dominant chord that we used for this G D dominant. Now it's an F sharp. And here's our... Um, uh, B dominant. They've got a B7 on the chart. The the F sharp dominant, they call that a G flat or an F sharp. That's what they call an enharmonic. Here's our B dominant. We're we'll using 13. And if you want, you can slide your pinky down a half step. And then we're on a B minor. They have an E7 there, which you can you can do that, but you don't really even need to. So what that sounds like, I'll, I'll play it up to this point. There's our D, our B flat diminished. Here's our A minor to the D7. Here's the G major to G minor. Here's our F sharp 7. Our B dominant, we walked it down, our pinky down for the next fret. And then, we go, then we go to a B minor, and then we go to... There's a um, B flat seven. And again, these are all the same voicings I'm using. So once you get one of them, you, you can just get the others by sliding your hand around on the neck. This is a um, A dominant chord, but it's a, a little bit of an altered chord. If you play an A13 and just slide your pinky down or play an A7, put your pinky there it's the same thing and it's also the same voicing as when we walk this B dominant chord it's a really important one you're going to use it a ton and then we're back to our vamp D7 
7 our G major. G minor. F to B. Walk it down to B minor. B flat dominant to the A dominant. Back to the down. So um, that's you know, get that down, get that down really good to where you can comfortably make those changes and you can play it in time. You can play it slower. If you're a singer, you know, and you want to sing this song, get the words and practice accompanying yourself while you sing. Um, Send me an email if you do it in a different key or something, and I can um, help you out with transposing it or whatever. Um, what was the other thing? If you get bored, start playing the, the root before you play the chord like... section and get it down as best you can um, and if you'd like um, you could at this point you know once you get that down shoot me a video I'd be happy to look at it and give you some advice ideally you'd like to learn this to be able to play it in a couple of different positions and I'll, I'll show you some ideas on that as well in a, a subsequent video. Thank you very much.